All right, college algebra. We're looking at absolute value equations and inequalities, absolute values. This is section 1.8. Okay. Now, let's look at absolute value just for a minute. When you have absolute value of 5, okay, that means how far is that from 0? Well, it's 5 from 0. That's what absolute value means, how far this number is from 0. What about negative 2? Absolute value of negative 2. Well, that's just 2. Okay? So, absolute values just mean how far this number is from 0. It's always going to be positive every time. Okay? Now, but what if you have a variable in there? Like the absolute value of x equals 6. The absolute value of x is 6. Well, then what could x be? What value on the number line is 6 away from 0? Well, there's two of them. x could be 6 or x could equal negative 6. There's two values x could be. And so this is the uh, concept of what's going to be uh, taking place in this lesson here. Now, uh, let's look at some of these problems we're going to deal with. Okay, right here, absolute value of x is 7. That means x could be 7, x could be negative 7. So these are the two values x could be. All right, now it says on here to uh, graph this. All right, we just have these two values. So it looks like this right here, just these two values. It's not going to be an inequality. It's not going to be a, this right here. See how these connect? right here that means that's going to be a less than see how these are opposites that's going to be a greater than so this one right here this would be x would be greater than i'm sorry absolute value of x is greater than seven this right here absolute value of x would be less than seven and look 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 see how these are it's going to be an equal to line on that one okay so that's the difference here on these graphs. Now look at this next one here. Okay, this one's a little tricky. Absolute value of x is greater than negative 6. Okay, now let me show you this right here. It's greater than negative 6. Well, the absolute value is always positive. So no matter what I put in here for x, it's always going to be greater than negative because it's always going to be positive. Like if I put negative 2 in there, absolute value of negative 2 is 2. And 2 is greater than negative 6. If I put 0 in there, absolute value of 0 is 0, that's greater than negative 6. No matter what I put in here, it's going to be greater than negative 6. So that's going to be it, this one right here. The whole complete number line, everything works. Okay? Now, what if it said this? Absolute value of x is less than negative 6. What if it said that? Okay. Well, whatever I put in here is going to be positive. Well, how can a positive be less than a negative? It can't. So this would be empty set. Okay. But anyway, my answer here, this is the whole complete number line. Because every value I put in is going to be greater than a negative number. Okay. All right, now, what do we got here? Absolute value of x is less than 2. Okay, that means x could be 2, x could equal negative 2. All right, it's less than, which means it connects. So it's going to go from negative 2, connecting to positive 2. And it's, should, uh, it does not have brackets because it doesn't have the equal to line. So it's going to connect. So look at my choices over here. And here's one's connect. This one's got brackets, and that's not we want. Here's what we want right there, C. That's my answer. Now, see here see here how these go opposite? That means it's going to be a greater than. That means right here, this absolute value is greater than because they don't connect. They go opposite, which means it's greater than. Okay. And then I'm going to put uh, 2 in there. And then uh, now this one's all jacked up. See, this is a bracket, and that this can't be... This can't be ever a choice. They're, they're either both brackets or they're both parentheses. So this needs to be a bracket here. And then that'd be equal to. This one down here, absolute value of x is greater than because they're going opposite. 
two, and then see these are parentheses, so there's no equal to line in there. So there, that's what that would be. Okay, now here's what we come to. We come to solve this absolute value equation here. All right, let's write this down. 2x minus 3 equals 8. Okay, and when you have this absolute value, any, this absolute value equation, that means this thing inside here could be 8, or this thing inside could be negative 8. So we have two equations we have to set up here. This 2x minus 3 could be 8, or this 2x minus 3 could be negative 8. And there's two separate equations to solve. Okay, two, it, this right here could equal eight, this could equal negative eight. So two equations to solve. So if I solve this, I would add three, two x equals 11, divide by two, 11 over two. There's one solution. On this one here, I'll add three, two x equals negative five, divide by two, uh, negative 5 over 2. There's my two solutions. Okay, and look there, man. We did it. Look at that. We got it. All right. Okay. What about this? That's the routine you're going to do on every one of these. So, this one here, well, guess what? Let me write it down. So, guess what? This thing inside here, could equal 5 or this thing inside could equal negative 5 okay that's how you set it up this thing inside here could equal 5 because the absolute value of 5 is 5 but this thing inside could be negative 5 because the absolute value of negative 5 is 5 so I set this to both 5 and negative 5 and I solve both these so right here if I solve a minus 6 Negative 3x equals negative 1. Divide by negative 3. I'm going kind of fast here. That's going to be positive 1 third. If I do this one, I'll minus 6. Negative 3x equals negative 11. Divide by negative 3. 11 thirds. So there's my two answers. 1 third and 11 thirds. Hey, all right, all right. I like to get it right. And then uh, six, the same way. Uh, let's see here. I'll let you try six. This would equal one. This would equal negative one. And you solve both of them. Here's what it is. And if you can't get that, uh, let me know. And I'll help you with it individually. Okay, let's go on the next one. Solve this one. I'll do this one. Okay. So, uh, let me get another piece of paper. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and write my two equations. This thing inside could equal 13, or this thing inside could equal negative 13. Okay. So right here, I need to multiply both sides by x minus 4. Okay, now I notice right here, 4... I can't have 4 as a solution because that would make me divide by 0. So your 4 minus 4 would divide by 0. So I can't have 4 as an answer to this. All right, so when I multiply both sides, this cancels. 9 equals 13 times this over here. So 13 times x, 13 times negative 4 is negative 52. Okay, now I'll, I'll add 52. So that's going to give me, what, 61. And then I divide by 13. So there's one solution right there. Okay, we got it off the screen a little bit. Sorry about that. Now let's go to this one. All right, I'm going to have to multiply both sides by x minus 4. Okay. Which means here that cancels, so I got 9 equals, now negative 13 times all this, so negative 13 x, negative 13 times negative 4 is positive 52. Okay, and so I solve this, which means I'll minus 52, so 
So I've got uh, negative 13 X and this is going to be, uh, what is it, uh, negative 43. Okay, and then I divide by negative 13. Okay, that's going to be positive four, 43 over 13. So there's my two answers. Uh, let's see if we got this right, man. I'm kind of wondering. Hey, we did it. We got him, man. All right. I'm betting a thousand. Okay. Now, when you get to this, here's the inequality. We're going to do the same thing. So, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and write my two. I'm going to have two inequalities the same way. So I'm going to have 2x plus 9. And I'll just go ahead and... It's less than 3. Okay, then I have 2x plus 9. I'm going to change around do greater than. And I'm going to do negative 3. Alright, so when I, do, when I do these inequalities... When this is an inequality right here... I set up my two equations, but they're, they're inequalities. So I set up the two of them. I do this first one just like it reads. But when I do the negative, I gotta switch it around to, to the other side. So that I gotta switch around to a greater than, and I solve both of these. So I minus nine, divide by two, and that's gonna be negative three. There we go. Okay, now right here, a minus 9, 2x greater than or equal, that's negative 12, divide by 2, x is greater than negative 6, okay? Now, just a, uh, a word of hint now, my original, remember it has a less than, which means they connect. They connect. So, they connect from negative 6, the lowest one, to negative 3, the highest one. So this is going to be from negative 6 to negative 3. And it's in parentheses like this. That would be my interval. Okay, there it is. So we're right on that. Now, uh, if it was greater than, then I would have, they would go opposites. Let me see if there's... One of those, uh, I don't know if there is one. Everything looks like it's less than, so we may not have any greater than ones. Let me just show you. If it was greater than, okay, let's just say this was greater than, then it would uh, go opposites. Of course, I can't do this problem. Let's make up one. Okay, let's say it was a greater than. I'll just make up one. There we go. I'll tell you what, let's change this to three. That way it comes out to be. Okay, so I've got 2x minus 1 greater than 3. And then I have 2x minus 1 less than and do negative 3. Okay, so when I saw this, I'll add 1. 2x is greater than 4, divide by 2, x is greater than 2. Over here, I'll add 3, 2x is less than 0, divide by 2, x is less than 0. All right, but my original problem is a greater than, which means they go opposites. So, if you look at the number line, here's 0 and here's 2. They're going to go opposite like this. See, x is less than 0 x is greater than 2, they go opposites. So this would be negative infinity to 0, and this would be 2 to infinity. Okay, so didn't have it on there. I'm sorry. Didn't have it all the way on the screen here, but this would be x is less than 0, x is greater than 2, and they go opposites. I'll put a union thing in there. Okay. All right, so here's one here. I'll let you try this one, okay? You try this one, here's the answer for that. Okay, see how it's less than or equal to? That tells you right there they connect, which means you're gonna have the low value and the high value, and it's got the equal to line, which means you're gonna have brackets. So I'll let you do this one. 
Okay, I'm going to jump down to 10 here. Okay. And on 10, it's back to equal, equality. Let me write this down here. 4 minus 2x in absolute value bars minus 8 equals 2. Okay. Now, right here, we got this 8 in no man's land. We can't do anything with that 8 there. We're going to have to add 8 to both sides to get rid of this. And that gives us a 10 over here. Okay, we have to have in these in, in these absolute values, we gotta have our absolute value bar on this side by itself and then a number on this side. We can't have an eight like this in no man's land. We gotta get rid of him. So I have my absolute value on one side and my number on the other side. And then I can set up my two equations and solve. I can't solve if I've got this number here. So I've got four minus two X equals 10. Then I got four minus two X equals negative 10. See this thing inside could be 10 or it could be negative 10. So I set up both of these. And then I'm gonna solve kind of quickly here. There you go, there's one solution. Right here, I'm going minus four, negative two X equals negative 14 divided by negative two. There's my two answers, negative three and seven. Okay. Negative three and seven. All right, so we're in good shape. But the thing is, this number, we've got to get rid of it. We can't have that number there. So I've, I added eight to get rid of it. And now I got my absolute value bar on this side and I got my number on that side. It's got to be like this. Okay, which here's another one right here. And I'll let you complete this one. All right, but I'm gonna to have to add 13 to both sides. Okay, because that 13's in the way there. I can't do it with that 13 there. So now that's gonna give me this. Oh, this is an inequality. Or maybe, well, when I add 13, that's gonna be 11 over here. And there you go. I can set up my two inequalities. Okay, so I'll let you do this one. Here's what my solution is here. All right, I'm gonna do 12. Okay, make sure you get this paused so you can see what the answer is and you can do this yourself. All right, 12. All right, so again, I got this five. So I'm just gonna write right here, I'm gonna add five to both sides there. Okay, so I got six X plus one half less than 13. Okay. All right, so that means I have 6x plus 1 half less than 13. I've got 6x plus 1 half. I'm going to switch it to greater than when I do the negative 13. Okay. So I saw this. So I'm going to subtract 1 half. So 6x is less than there. I'm going to do 13, subtract 1 half. That's 12 and a half, but we don't do uh, mixed numbers much on this. So this is going to be uh, 25 halves. Okay. And so I'm going to divide by 6 on both sides. Now you can just punch this in your calculator, but this is going to be 25 over 12. All right, there's 1. Okay. Now, uh, from the beginning now, see how this is less than? These are going to connect. They're going to connect. So when I do this one, I'm going to minus one half. All right, this is going to be six X is greater than or equal to, all right. Negative 13, that's going to be negative 26, negative 27 halves. I just did that in my head. Okay, and now I divide by six. All right, this is going to be Negative 27 over 12, which simplifies to uh, uh, they both divided by 3, so negative 9 over 4. There you go. There's my other one. Okay. So here's my two values. They connect. So the lowest one is negative 9 over 4. The highest one is 25 over 12. And it did not have equal to, so there you go. Ooh, we got it. We got it, man. That's the right answer. Okay. All right. 
Now, if, if I go too fast on this, you have a question, just contact me. I'll help you all I can. We are doing just a couple more of these. Okay, yeah. Uh, all right, look at this one. When I minus eight on both sides, because I got to get rid of that eight, because he's in no man's land. This is going to go away. I'll have three X plus four in my absolute value bars less than negative five. Okay. Now, right here, look at this. This absolute value is less than negative five. Now, remember, absolute value is always positive. How can a positive be less than negative five? It can't. The solution set is empty. Okay. And look here. We got another one. Look, this absolute value is less than negative 13. How can an absolute value be less than a negative number? It can't. So there's another one. All right, so you got to be aware of that. When you have an absolute value less than a negative, you can't do that. Now, look here. If you have an absolute value, whatever, let's just do this 12 minus 16x. If it's greater than negative 13, if it's greater than a negative, everything you put in here is going to be greater than because this is always going to be positive. So this would be all numbers, our solutions, or the whole number line. So there you go. All right, we've got two more. Okay. All right, get on where you see it. All right, write this statement as an absolute value equation or inequality. It says P is within 0 0.0002 units of 6. Okay. P is within 0 0.002 units of 6. All right, so that means P is real close to 6. So I'm, I'm going to subtract this from 6. Okay, so P minus 6. That should be an absolute value of bars. Okay. It's within, which means it's less than this right here. So here's how you'd set that up. Okay, now, so this is P minus, this should be P minus 6 in absolute value bars, less than, and then 0 0.0002. Okay, it's within that, that means like, if you look at the number line here, all right, here's 6, okay, so that means it's got to be, This is 0 0.0002. It's got to be between these two values right here. All right, so 6 is the value that it's close to, so it's got to be P minus that. So if I subtract whatever this P value is, this P value right here is 6.0002. And this one right here is 5.00, I'm sorry, 5.9998 is what this value is. Okay, but anything in between there works for this. But anyway, just setting it up is all we're doing there. And this one here is the same thing. Write this one as an absolute value equation or inequality. R is no less than two units from 25. R is no less than two units from 25. So that means... The point in question is 25, so R minus 25. If I subtract those, that would be an absolute value of R's. But it's no less than, which means it's not less than, which means it's greater than, or equal, and then 2. That's how it's set it up. Now, let me explain it to you. It's not less than. So if it's not less than, that means it's greater than or equal. So it's not less than, greater than or equal. So that's how you set it up right there. Okay. Well, that's all we have for today on this college algebra. Absolute value equations and inequalities. If you have any questions at all, just give me a shout and I'll try to help you all I can. All right. So I hope you have a great rest of the day.